Andy Stevenson at Team KF sitting beside Ryan Shelley ahead of your fight against Magdi Gareev yeah. this Friday at Cage Wars 135 in Manchester. How are you feeling today, sir? Very good, Andy. Yeah, I was just down for the KF Rollathon there and um, very happy with how things are going. Just wrapped up the camp there at the end of uh, at the end of this week, pretty much. Just get the weight down now and then it's fight time on Friday, so feeling good for it. Yeah, so how was the camp in general? You, you know, you, you just had your last bar, but how has it been overall? Yeah, so I had my last bar there on Wednesday, but beforehand, uh, well, first things first, we never really do camps anyway, you know, so like uh, the lads, there was Taka, Ben, Julian, Craig, one or two others were fighting uh, back in March, so from the start of the year, I was pretty much helping them prepare for their fight, so it was like I was doing a camp myself, and then it was literally the week after the fi their fight, I had got news about this, so I, I think that was about three or four weeks apart, and I said, lovely, you know, I'm in a good spot anyway, because I was helping them prepare, and uh, that's how I like to do things, you know, so some would call it jumping in short now this but you know if I'm training sort of consistently there's no need not to like you know yeah. what I mean so. I mean you know it was announced uh, back in December that both yourself and Adam had been signed to Cage Wars was this you know was the April kind of time frame what you were looking for or had you originally been hoping to get in sooner maybe in the March card I would have liked in the March card it, because obviously there were a lot of eyes on that one too but Chris said to us both early on uh, like about the end of January he said the, the March card probably isn't looking likely but they're planning one for April so I was just sort of like yeah look there's a few weeks in between uh, just plan a bit ahead and get ready for the April one and then before I knew it uh, Adam was announced and then when once Adam was announced I had a good idea that I was going to be on it myself so I sort of always had that in the back of my head that I was going to be on for the 1st of April so here we are now yeah, yeah. and like it seemed like it was kind of relatively not maybe not short notice but like it wasn't you didn't have a whole few months to prepare for your opponent Magdi um, when did you guess first find out that you were fighting him about three weeks ago now at this stage but uh, like I said before short notice is something it's actually something that I like you know I don't tend to dwell on things or overthink things too much but like uh, I can't remember who said it before but like when you've when you've eight to ten weeks to prepare for someone it's sort of like it's all you think about for the eight to ten weeks so I like just sort of training almost not knowing what's going to happen and then find out because from the background that I came from kickboxing and taekwondo it was uh, tournament style so you'd rock up to a competition on the day and literally not know who you're fighting and so you just had to be ready for that so I've been doing that for years and it's something that I've actually grown to like uh, in terms of the opponent like um, yeah sure I had a little look at him uh, I like his style I think it's going to be a tough fight but I see myself coming out on top yeah. Yeah. and you know of course you're a jiu jitsu expert now with your uh, two <laughs> submission wins to start off your yeah. pro career and then also it was really the jiu jitsu that, or the grappling that set up the, the TKO finish in your last true. one true yeah so um, again like it's, it's a bit of a mad one how that happened when I first came to KF uh, Chris and Tom were like you know we like your strike and there's a few things you need to tweak but really start putting a big emphasis on your ground game so then as the weeks and months went on and uh, I was doing a load of work on the ground and I was like I'm actually really liking this you know I sort of I sort of fell in love with it the whole the whole idea of being a beginner again and starting from scratch and then um, in, in, when I was sparring I'd find myself in grappling exchanges almost wanting to get there and then it just sort of progressed from there and then in my fights not that I planned like I wasn't going out saying I'm going to submit these lads it just sort of happened that way it ended up on the ground and I'd know where to go from there do you know what I mean and so uh, it just sort of evolved from there really you know yeah I haven't actually told you this but I just interviewed your brother and he admitted that you took to the grappling aspect uh, quicker than he did yeah did he tell you a story about when we started no go on oh this is a great story so um, so I started in November 2017 right around the time Taka was a few weeks before me and so and then Adam had popped in sorry one second did, on. did you guys know Taka beforehand because you uh, Adam also talked about mm. starting at the same time as Taka did you guys know each other prior to Team Kev? I had I had heard of him uh, through like a mutual friend but no we didn't know each other but I knew who he was when he came down um, so yeah we all started right around the same mark but Adam I think was busy at, with college at the moment so he was a bit later getting getting into it than us and uh, then I think it was about two or three months in he hadn't been down for a while and he came down for a session and me and Taka both submitted him and whooped his ass pretty much and he was basically like right you know I need to get to work here I can't have this like you know what I mean so then after that he, it sort of gave him the wake up call that he needed yeah. and uh, yeah since then he's been busy uh, he kind of he, I suppose he maybe didn't tell the full story but he did touch on the fact yeah, that you yeah. know he says that nowadays it's a lot more competitive it and is. It, yeah. it is yeah no now it's it's 
it's tit for tat. Like, you know, I might get him one day, he might get me the next day. But uh, yeah, no, at, at the mo at the time when we first started, it's just he had he had other commitments and uh, where I didn't really, I was down all the time. Like, so as soon as I started, I was pretty much full-time training, whereas it took him a little bit longer to get involved. So Yeah, and he was saying that you guys actually have your own uh, martial arts school uh, not too far away from here. Yeah, we have a Taekwondo club uh, right around where we're from in Whitehall. And um, yeah, we, that, that's going a while now. It's It started off as a little small thing, but it's been getting bigger as the years go on. Like, and uh, as we get older in our lives, like we'll find we'll, we'll ha we want to have fighters ourselves one day, you know, who, you know, maybe, maybe they start off in Taekwondo, but they might decide to take the route that we want to and go off and do MMA. So that's, that's the beauty of martial arts. You don't have to stay with one. You can move on to others, you know. Yeah. We touched on it there a minute ago. You know, you come from a striking background, mm -hmm. world champion in, in Taekwondo and kickboxing, and right? Kickboxing. Wacko kickboxing. Yeah, yeah. Um, your first couple of fights, submission victories, yeah. was that a point to prove or did it just happen that way? A bit of both, yeah, yeah. So uh, I remember thinking it was coming up to the to the first Cage Warriors fight. Um, he the guy had a good like it was like an amateur boxing background he had. So I figured it was going to be pretty even on the feet. And then me and Chris had been talking, and he was like, "I reckon if it ends up on the deck, you know, you know where to go from there." And uh, in the fight, it was just off a scramble. It was very back and forth fight, and then I ended up on his back, and I was like, "Right here we go. This is it." I knew the submission was coming. So yeah. When I got that, it was like, you know, it was like, I'd say I put a few people on notice maybe that had planned to fight me. It was like, right, so this guy isn't just a striker. Mm -hmm. We have to sort of prepare for everything here. So, yeah, at least I'm showing, showing all facets of my game, you know? Yeah, when I spoke to Adam, you know, I asked him why cage wears, and the answer he kind of gave me was, you know, when you look in the gym, you see who've come before you, yeah. the likes of Chris, Ash, Cole, it's all been cage wears. Oh, yeah. Was that all, is that also your perspective where it kind of was the route that made sense? Obviously, you fought on cage wears before, mm -hmm for your debut so yeah why for you separate from Adam why, yeah. why for you Cage Warriors yeah again it's it seems to be the culture in this gym you know where a lot of the people that have came before us went the Cage Warriors route and um, to be honest it sunk in with me because Adam had had a couple of amateur fights with Cage Warriors and I went over to watch them and I was in the corner for a few and I really liked the setup you know now like not to not to knock other shows like I'm sure there's there's other shows out there that do it just as good you know but um, Cage Warriors was the first experience I had sort of got of the big show so straight away I was like I'd like to I'd like to get there you know so that's what it was for me yeah taking on a guy in Magdi Gareev um, he seems to have you know a bit of hype kind of behind him I would say in the UK scene watching some of his fights he seems to be a solid grappler yeah. he's had highlight reel KOs you were talking we, I we were talking just before this and you were saying you know we're, we're a bit similar yeah how do you see yourselves matching up yeah I think it's a really good one um, like you said we are similar in the, t in the terms that you know we're both sort of same height you know same body type um, we like it striking or on the f on the ground so um, that's why I think it's, it's going to be a really interesting fight you know I think you're going to see a bit of everything it's going to be a real mixed fight uh, I see it starting on the feet probably end up on the deck um, and then I think as the fight goes on I think one thing that it's, it's probably an underrated part of my game is my gas tank like I feel like I can go all day like you know and and uh, I don't really get tired in the round. So regardless of how the fight's going, I'm going to be there right to the end. So uh, I see myself as the fight maybe, as a, if it drags out into a dog fight, I see myself getting a stoppage maybe late in the fight. What's, you know, looking at Gareev, what's the difference between the two years fighters? Um, again, skillfully, he looks to be good. Maybe, you know, maybe the difference could be mentally. I'm not too sure what the difference is. I'm going to find out next week. Yeah. But uh, I'm feeling confident anyway, put yeah. it that way. I'm just curious, you know, coming from a striking background, have you had to alter specifically the striking aspects of your game for MMA? Is there any difference or do you kind of go in with a, a similar approach? Oh, definitely. Like, there was a lot I actually had to change. Um, I was a bit naive when I joined and thinking that all I have to do is work on my ground game but like that couldn't be further from the truth like and I think that's that's a someone's opinion it'll, it'll be someone's opinion who doesn't have a lot of experience in MMA so when I first went first of all I was getting the legs kicked off me you know so fair enough I came from a kickboxing background but there was no kicks below the waist mm. so that was a big thing that I had to change I had to change things up in my stance a little bit and then um, also another thing my hands weren't great you know because I'd, I'd been mainly a kicker when I came into MMA so I had been mixing around with a bit of boxing as well when I was in college so I think that really helped me make the transition uh, between the leg kicks and the 
the boxing so I've sort of refined it now to make my own style yeah. and how active are you looking to stay this year you know we've mm. we're already kind of fearing into April here yeah. now so how many fights would you be looking to get in in 2022 like provided that everything goes well I'd see myself maybe getting four in this year like you know like look if I could get five in perfect but um, again the style we came from I remember one year having between 20 and 30 fights in a year you know and uh, now fair enough they went to the same duration or they, they weren't as tough as an MMA fight but you were still getting all that mat time in and that experience so um, ideally like I'd love to go every couple of weeks if I could I know that's not really the way it happens in MMA but yeah if I, if everything went well for me uh, for this year I'd say so yeah. then not again not to look past mm -hmm. this Friday but uh, the Belfast card in June is that one that's kind of appealing to you yeah definitely um, so like I said I, I was purely focused on, on the fight for next week which I still am but when I when I heard the dates announced like it's only human to be like oh I'd also like that you know so um, I think with a good win here on Friday that would set me up nicely for uh, uh, another performance on Cage Warriors on the 25th of June and get a nice gang up to Belfast obviously the news has been broke about Taka and Amran getting signed to Cage Warriors so it could be a it could be a card full of Team KF and FAI we'll see what happens you know yeah like it, it, that must be a bit uh, you know give a big buzz in the gym you know when you have so many signed cage words yeah. like uh, is it kind of is it, is it an exciting time at the gym here oh it's brilliant you know I was I was thrilled when I heard the news um, I always find you know like fair enough if it's, it's an individual sport but the more people you can get fighting on the same card from the gym the better like, I always find the atmosphere is better and let's say when there's a few of us uh, training for a fight things are going to get tough so it's good to have the team uh, I mentioned this on the Energize show as well it's good to have that team spirit to bring you along you know what I mean so uh, definitely now for June it would be uh, it'd be unreal if we could get four or five of the lads on it'd be great yeah and last one for me the level of opposition right are you looking to go in here and just fight the hardest fights possible or what's your approach to your you know the coming into cage warriors yeah. it's a long term deal you obviously fought in it before but now it's it, like there's a pathway mm -hmm. so what do you want to achieve obviously going towards the title but as far as your opponents yeah so obviously my goal is to one day win a, a cage warriors world title uh, in the featherweight division when that will be I haven't a clue um, all I know is I have five fights on my contract and I am in no rush whatsoever so you know like some people might are have a different approach they're like your brother yeah yeah <laughs> he's sort of gunning for it right away I'm a bit different you know like I'm a bit younger than him um, we're at just different stages in our life I'm at I'm in no rush whatsoever I'm going to take every challenge as it comes to me and just what I do want is with each fight that comes I want like a tougher challenge than the next do you know what I mean so then by the time that title fight does come along I'll have faced each of the challenges put in front of me dealt with them and then I know myself I'm ready and like just on that um, I, again I mentioned this on the show uh, me and Adam had the pleasure of going up and sparring uh, Paul Hughes mm -hmm. I think it was uh, was a February could have been around February time coming up to his uh, fight with Jordan terrible about what happened like it was such a shame with the injury but um, so I felt Paul in there like you know we, we, we did some rounds and I was like right you know that's the level I need to get at I'm not there yet like you know what I mean like the sparring proved that but uh, I know I will get there but like you said I just need each fight as it comes to test myself and eventually I'll get there you know Ryan Shelley taking on Magdy Gareev this Friday Cage Warriors 135 in Manchester's BC Arena tune in on UFC Fight Pass and thanks for the time Sam, appreciate it thanks a million